going to be interviewing Mr. Biz Fact. He's a uh, blogger, filmmaker, uh, a uh, advocate of killing boredom, and uh, I I'll say a whole mess of other things that we'll let him get into. So, Mr. Biz Fact, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty good, Mr. Ham Blogger, and yourself? Cool, man. I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to have you on the show because, uh, you know, I've been seeing these videos that you're making, and they're really cool, man. Uh, you got a, you, a lot of information that you're yeah, bringing. Yeah, I I, I'm the king of the, of, the, of the best videos with the absolute lowest views. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to turn that around, man. Well, we're going to turn that around. There's a paradigm shift going on, man. Pretty soon people are going to stop liking the dumb stuff. They're going to come get hip to the biz fact. Well, I hope they do. I, I do my fair <laughs> share of dumb stuff, though. Anything that's fun. <laughs> uh, the circumcision video, um, one of the YouTube users uh, was bugging me about doing a documentary on circumcision. Now, I love doing documentaries uh, for YouTube. It's fun, but I, I never intended to do a circumcision documentary, but Labor Day came around, and there was some barbecue sausage, and I thought about Gingerwich. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm... I do need to do just a video. Uh, yeah. okay. So I, that, that's how where that came from. But I do have my, my fair share of wackiness. That video is graphic too, man. You might have the ADL up on your channel here pretty soon, man. I mean, you worried about uh, being accused of being an anti-Semite? Uh, no. That no. was no... Um, I'm not anti-anything. I'm, I'm for things. You know, cool. I'm not I'm not against Rick Perry or uh, Barack Obama. I'm for Ron Paul. Right, so right. I, I find it's better to um, be positive with regard to your disposition as far as dealing with topical issues go. No, that's what's up, man. And that that is really part of the intellectual renaissance that you know we're seeing go on in the world today, man. Is that folks are starting to get themselves positioned in a uh, a more centered place, man, to where it's, it's not, like you say, about being against, it's about being for something. Right. It, that, that means a lot. I think that that shows a lot of integrity, man. And and I was I was just joking around. I don't think that they're going to come at you. But, you know, uh, circumcision is a relevant topic. It, it, you know, there's a lot of people. Uh, have you heard about foreskin men? I saw him uh, I, I, when I was doing the research for the circumcision video. Not not mm -hmm. that it needed much research to cut a sausage, but I kind of <laughs> like <laughs> to know what I'm dealing with. I did see him referenced on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I need to use foreskin as one of my tags. Thanks for reminding me. Hey, but no, no, I, no, I did not get a chance to um, check him. I probably did. I think he... Um, I think I saw the Shay guy do do a video about taking his kid to get circumcised, and I may have saw Foreskin Man referenced in the uh, related videos. Well, for those who don't know, Foreskin Man is a superhero who has chosen to fight against circumcision, and you know feels that it's a form of genital <laughs> mutilation. <laughs> Real man, he lives out here in Coronado. Man, that fool is crazy. So. uh Cool, man. But that's what's up, dude. That's the Viz fact is coming in so many different directions, man. And that's that's what I'm really intrigued by because you got your YouTube videos that you're doing, and which go from all different, you know, types of videos to from entertainment to news to news entertainment to you do some educational ones, and you also run VizFag.com. Uh, right? Yeah, there's more. Uh, VizFact.com is split into about six sites. Okay. Uh, Subsites, there's uh, online marketing, online-marketing.vizfact.com, uh, viztv.vizfact.com. Obviously, I wanted to do something to support the YouTube channel. Um, work, uh, homejobs.vizfact.com, where there's some free work at home listings. And uh, I forget. <laughs> okay, so but there's, uh, there's more. Uh, yeah, and I write more at hub, CI. Yeah, I write at hub pages. I just like to try to be productive with my time. Uh, I did a lot of gaming, but I find it more rewarding to 
share my thoughts and provide information to people. Cool, man. We appreciate that, man. That's what's up, man. I'm telling you, this the intellectual renaissance is what's going down. Man, that's that's really what, you know, I wanted to get you on here and ask you these questions, man. You know, like, uh, was was there something going on in, in the world or in your life that was responsible for this kind of shift that you were going through where, where you wanted to uh, kind of give more, be seen more in the world? Well, yes and no. Um I've been a, a internet, I don't want to call myself an internet personality, but an internet hanger outer <laughs> uh, since about 2000, 2001. And I've been a publisher since maybe 2004, 2005. And um, I knew how to publish. I just needed something worth publishing. So publishing meaning writing a blog post, launching a website, or uploading uh, a video to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all want to make money. And if you uh, publish data to the internet there's an opportunity for income but I never wanted to be a spammy type of uh, uh, personality for lack of a better phrase none of my websites have any pop-ups and uh, I like to be found rather than go out looking for people to f uh, looking for people to spam my, my data with mm -hmm. uh, data meaning whatever I've uploaded to the web right. and um, it, it's quite rewarding and when you see growth you want to keep it going and um, I, did I answer your question or did I go off into some No, no, trial? no. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to lead into, this, man, because I think that it's that feeling that you get when you know it's the content of your material that's lead, bringing people there and not just advertisement or some marketing scam, man. And, and I th it's cool that you, you know, are emphasizing that because I think that that really is embodying, embodying a, a real incentive for the citizen journalism of today, man. And uh, so... Speaking you, of journalism, you, you know, I was thinking about that today. I think I was driving home um, from a, a job interview and I was listening to Michael Savage I always get the job, so don't worry. Okay. And uh, he was saying there are no more real journalists. There are no more journalists that really take the time to dig into things and get the facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, me being a professional debt collector and an investigator, mm -hmm. I'm already equipped with tools that I would use in my daily work mm -hmm. to do journalism, like I did a video about slavery in America, a series that I really want to do, and I showed um, how the United States is actually uh, uh, incorporated orphan out of the state of Pennsylvania and I got to that conclusion by visit, visiting uh, the Secretary of State in Pennsylvania and looking it up. It's a very interesting concept and without those skills for my professional life I wouldn't be able to do that type of journalism which I feel that is actual real citizen journalism mm -hmm. when I think of a subject and I start digging mm -hmm. and I come on to interesting stuff it's bloggable and it's YouTubeable. please believe I'm gonna put it out there for you to see Word. Yeah, and, that, and that's what's up, man. And, you know, it's that life experience that I don't think can be given to you in any uh, college, you know, lecture. Well, that's college, it. in my opinion, is just filled with people that are reading a whole lot of books mm -hmm. about one subject in particular, which kind of leaves them open to um, being dumbasses uh, mm -hmm. to every other subject in life. Mm -hmm. And I'd trade... Uh, I believe that savvy is 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 worth a doctorate. True, true, and you and that's what brings people to you, man. Is emanating, you know, that type of vibration because that's what people that's what people want to see. That's the confidence, man, and that's something that can only be given to you through life experience, man. And that, that's what's up, man. So. But but well, this this is this fact, and I have to leave the people with something real. Getting that doctor, it gets you paid. So if you mm -hmm. can, if you have savvy, and mm -hmm. you can find that balance, you can be great. Yeah, I, I'm not against um, going and and becoming higher edu educated on a higher level, mm -hmm. but it's important to keep it in perspective. You're going to read a bunch of books about one subject and hear lectures about one particular subject and life is so much more than that and it should be kept in perspective and another thing that gets on my nerves is people that think they're smarter smarter than everyone else because they've read a bunch of books about one subject I think that is the most idiotic concept around I think they call these people yuppies 
Yeah, it, it, they got big libraries to do all that stuff. And I guess what I'll say more too, man, is like maybe it's just something that comes with age. You know, they, and that's a life experience. So, you, you know, if college is something that you go through and then get you to a point to where you have a, a, a job experience, a real life experience, like you were saying, that you can then apply to getting into the uh, deeper understanding of your existence. That, that's, what's, that's what's major, man. So we're getting metaphysical here right now on the hand blogger, man, with this biz fact. I'm, think, I'm thinking about talking about time and space with you. Hey, well, well hold up. Hold up one <laughs> second, man. Okay, because we're going to stay on the planet real quick, but we're going to get there. Uh, when, uh, when you think of the media today, man, do you, do you agree then with Michael Savage? You know, the, this journalistic spirit? I totally, I totally 100% agree with Michael Savage on his takes as far as the media is concerned, which I'm beginning to call the lamestream media. I'm mm -hmm. not sure who coined that, but it sounds good. And in fact, I'm writing a blog post as we speak. Um, uh, I'm going to name it something to the effect of television is evil culturally and mentally. Yeah, it's definitely detrimental to people's imaginations, the uh, neural physiological effects of television should be in the forefront of our dialogues since most people are being raised by them and, and, and you know, just little children stuck in front of them and nobody discusses what the, the effects of this could be and it's tragic, man, and to me is evidence of a cover-up. Well, there will be a, a portion in the post where um, I talk about the radical TV haters and I'm going to embed a few YouTube videos talking about just that. Cool. We'll definitely be looking forward to uh, seeing that. Um, what, what do you think is one the main cause of this corruption of journalism? Money and power. Power is the only thing I can think of that's worth more than money. And if you have a device in people's homes that you can used to immediately connect to people, I believe that gives you the ability to embed and suggest thoughts, which kind of gives you a little bit of power over their decision making and their ability to be critical thinking thinkers. For example, uh, let's take Ron Paul for example. A lot of people don't know about Ron Paul and the ones that don't support him won't support him and for all the wrong reasons. One of them being that the television uh, has a negative, or when I say the television, I mean the television, <laughs> has yeah. a negative bias towards Ron Paul. And uh, in that example, I think that's one of the main problems with television and um, why I think it, it's become bad. Because it, it's not giving the truth. It's People want to know, mm -hmm. and it, it's not telling them. No, it's not informing people so that they can make decisions. It's shaping opinions by disinforming them. Right, and I think that people should look at television as entertainment, period. Word. Yeah, that, that's, what, that, that's, what's, that's what's up, man. The educational value of sitting in front of a little box, flickering images at you rapidly without stopping to let you digest any of that information is very limited. I mean, there's not an educational system there, man. It's all entertainment. So I agree, man. And, I, and that's why, you know, when I get rich, I'm going to have like 30 TVs all in my house and I'm going to make movies that on every single one, a different scene all coming together like the Matrix. Keep my brain stimulated while I watch it. <laughs> Sounds me? like an information overload to me, my friend. Well, if, you, if man, if I'm not having a stroke, it's probably not really worth my time, man. But I, I like to party, dude. So, Mr. Vizfac, again, thank you for uh, joining us on the Hamburger Man here. I want, I got some more questions for you, though, man. We keep uh, hearing this name, Ron Paul, uh, you know, coming up in this interview. Uh, you, from the get-go, said you were for him. Uh, is there any main issues that you really resonate with him that, that's the, given you this uh, determination? Yes, uh, there are a lot of main reasons, but the absolute main reason is the freedom of choice and the freedom to opt out of government programs. I really like that, and uh, the man seems genuine. 
and I believe he's ready to die for what he believes in, as any man should be. And a lot of the other presidential contenders, they seem ingenuine to me. Rick Perry, I think he's running just because he thinks he can win. The scary part is he can win. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitt Romney, he runs every chance he gets, and these men are businessmen. Once they get in the office, they're going to look to make money. Ron Paul is old enough to not give a damn. Word. <laughs> and he's old Word. enough to have already. <laughs> damn, that's a, I haven't heard that one, but that is, that's the counter to right there. So that, that's what I like no, he's about old. That, I like that. He's old. He, <laughs> he's set in his ways, and uh, he just doesn't give a damn about what you think. <laughs> and he will come on TV and share his radical beliefs. Most Americans are radical, and yeah. I consider anyone radical someone that exceeds past the speed limit when driving. So I believe if enough people knew about Ron Paul, he would win. And uh, back to our earlier discussion about the media, that's the problem with television. They don't, uh, that it's not informing people properly or it's choosing what, choosing as a whole. I mean, it's like all the other major stations, it's like they all go out and have lunch mm -hmm. and they get their agenda from, from, the, from the smoking guy from X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> And then at seven o'clock tonight, you're you're, you're force-fed the the latest <laughs> level of bullshit, if yeah. I can use that term. Oh, for sure, man, for sure. Uh, we're we're not censoring here, man. I mean that that, that in itself is one of the just most extreme examples of the hypocrite nature of today's television. You can't cuss on there, but you can go kill people. You know, you can be pornographic. Don't go say no bad words because the little kids might be listening to this, man. And I agree with you on that. I remember back in the 90s when we had this thing that they called gangster rap. I was like, well, what's the problem with it? <laughs> if Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger can go kill people, what, what do we call that, gangster acting? Well, we call it an action movie, so why don't we call gangster rap action rap and everybody will be happy? Man, that makes too much sense. Because music just doesn't jam anymore. It's, it's all stupid. I mean, I'd at least like to hear some realism. You know, I may want to hear something um, that may get me motivated or raise my aggression level. Because a lot of people aren't aggressive enough uh, at the right times. And, and certain types of entertainment is probably healthy for you. Not saying that rapping about uh, rap about shooting people is healthy. It's just a general idea of the, the type of... Um, feel you get from hearing something that's highly up-tempo and aggressive gets mm -hmm. you back in touch with your natural mm -hmm. instincts your actually actual manly instincts mm -hmm. to kick some ass no doubt. And enough men aren't kicking ass okay let me stop no no man you know what i'm saying we, we need to ramble of hip-hop where you at oh man this comes into another one of my questions here uh what Outside of the news, be it lamestream or authentic, uh, what inspires you to be VizFact? Well, I like to s finish what I start. Cool, man. So if I started VizFact.com, it needs to be successful. If I started vi uh, Mr. VizFact, which is my YouTube channel, uh, and Viz TV, which is what I named it, um, it, it needs to be successful. Uh, my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, once that's done, I'll, I'll reassess things. Uh, VizFact.com, uh, I want it to be a, a foremost blog or whatever. I have some plans for it in the future, but it's all about finishing what you start and seeing things through to the end. Um, the perfect example of what I mean is I wrote a blog post about uh, what did I name it? Trying. Uh, let me give you the exact name of it. Trying to accomplish your goals. Don't bullshit yourself. Liar. And what I mean is people say they're trying to do something, but when you ask people about their goals, they'll generally say what they're trying to do. And I think that is a load of shit because when you get ready to go and take a shit, you don't try to do it. You get up, you go in there, you sit your ass down, you drop your load. Mm -hmm. If you're smart, you'll wipe. If you're a genius, <laughs> you'll wash your hands. And at the end of the day, you accomplish something there. And in the meantime, while you were there, you got a chance to get some good thinking done. And you didn't try to do that. You actually got off your ass, went to another room, and sat back on your ass. So that's that's what, what VizFact.com is about. And that, that's what motivates me. 
getting it done. Cool, man. And ain't nothing like taking a nice, good shit, getting it Ag done. Agreed. <laughs> uh, all now, right, if man. You drink some apple juice and a lot of it. You could find yourself <laughs> making numerous trips to the bathroom with very little to show for it. There you go, man. We're getting biological with this thing on the hand blogger, man. The hand blogger, man. Dot You know what I'm saying? Forever uh, coming through the spiral at you with just folks doing the damn thing. Vistack is doing the damn thing. He's got his YouTube video popping off right now. He's got his blogs, multiple blogs popping off right now. So if you know you're listening to this, go check the dude out because it's really happening. Now to get down to something real serious, Viz, if I can call you Viz. Yes, sir, you can. Cool. Are you really not concerned with an pending alien invasion because of global warming? Because <laughs> I was with you until there, man. And then you, you were kind of that, and I was like, wait a second, man. Uh, my short answer, no. <laughs> that was wild, right? Yeah, uh... And that's, the, and that's the problem with TV. They won't make fun of this on a level to which it needs to be made fun of. Or, and if they have, I haven't seen it. Um, no, man, they're quiet as kept. Yeah, I, I have. Um, I got into that during one of the videos I did. I can't think of which one it was. But there's actually a, a government program or a program that was where they could project holograms globally mm -hmm. and make it seem like there was an alien invasion. Project Bluebeam. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. in one of my videos, I go over it, and, and, and there's a link to the PDF, or at least it gives you enough uh, information in the video to where you could look it up for yourself. No, I don't believe that. However, I'm not going to say that I don't believe that there is a such thing as space aliens because I think it's possible. Uh, in the Bible, in Genesis, in the first chapter, God clearly stated that he created the stars, too. And, and the reason why I, I don't have a problem with the Bible not getting into it more, because I don't think it's our business. But it's sure. clear it's clear that God did say, look, I created the stars, too. And if God is smart and all-knowing, he knows the sun is a star, and the other stars are going to be like it um, as far as their chemical makeup. Mm -hmm. And they would also be capable of supporting life. So the Bible is not against, and I am a Christian, uh, the Bible is not against the idea of space aliens. But could they be demons? I mean, you know, the Bible gets into it a lot, and that's what I use as a historic reference. I mean, some people don't, but nothing mm -hmm. in the Bible has been proving wrong. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will take some of the uh, stories in the Bible that may have, uh, ch you know, chariots of fire. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means but people will make fun of it and that's fine with me because you know that's they're free to make fun of it and I may even think that it's funny but you know the Bible is the chariots greatest. of fire could possibly be UFOs it could be but it doesn't say that mm -hmm. it says chariots of fire mm -hmm. so when you start taking the words from the Bible and changing them then you know you get what you get it doesn't right. say UFOs that could mean that but it doesn't say that it says chariots of fire. If they wanted to put UFOs in there, they would have wrote it. Maybe they called UFOs chariots of fire back then. Maybe they look like chariots of fire. What is a chariot? It's a mechanism that's moving. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't it carrying something like a, a wagon? Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it has propulsion, uh, fire would be behind it. I, I don't think that would be space aliens because using a chemical propulsion would, doesn't make any sense for, that, for the distance involved in that type of travel. Mm -hmm. As far as space aliens are concerned, if they are visiting the Earth, I think they're from here. I don't think that there's any type of planet Xenon uh, mm -hmm. 50 light years away. Mm -hmm. I think they live here. Uh, they, you know, there's more water covering the surface of the Earth than there is land. It would be naive for us to think, you know, we only hold one quarter of the planet. It would be naive for us to think that the other three quarters, 75 percent of the world, didn't have some kind of intelligence that was on our level, which means that they actually dominate the planet because they have more of the territory. So, I mean, I, I go into my own thought patterns about this stuff, but, cool, you know. Man. No, that's what's up. And we appreciate you 
sharing that with us because it's a uh, complex issue. You know, a lot of the older civilizations have referenced, you know, similar uh, occurrences. I mean, one thing we got to be able to do is to wait out bullshit. I mean, some guy tells you things started four and a half billion years ago. That is bullshit. You can't even comprehend that kind of a number. Carbon mm -hmm. dating is only good for five or six thousand years. The other shit isn't proven enough to be good enough for uh, referencing. So, yeah. I mean, you cannot conceive, you can't study anything that's 4.5 billion years old. That's insane. Who put the zeros on the end of that number? Now, I don't know if the world is, the world is 6,000 years old or not, but when you go into numbers like billions, mm -hmm. bullshit has to come up into a consideration. Yeah, no doubt. And if anybody's, you know, trying to say that it's solid evidence, then they're probably bullshitting you because when you start getting into dates that long ago, it's all theoretical. But, I, you know, I do admire and, uh, you, you know, commend anybody who takes time to really think about these things and form an, uh, their own individual opinion on them. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, no doubt, man, because that's, that's what we need. And I, I see this happening, man. This is the intellectual renaissance that's going on right now, man. Folks are, you know, wisening up all over the place. It's and... all because of the Internet. I mean, we're able to uh, come together like a Borg and, and share information and yet not be the Borg because we're all independent. Mm -hmm. Radio was like that at its inception. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you could put out your own radio show and share data and you tell me something I didn't know and I share mm -hmm. a thought with you that you never conceived of and we're both mm -hmm. smarter just mm -hmm. because of the very nature of human interaction. Which is it's why true. I hate texting. I hate texting because it removes the human... F and I need to do a blog post about that. I think texting <laughs> removes the... Uh, kills the human condition. Well, the the you know, and just the ability to print and, and replicate was even before the radio spreading information in a quick manner and allowing folks who wouldn't otherwise have been exposed to it to be exposed. And I was tripping on texting, man, because like I've been reading into all of the early makings of typewriters and the, the early types, and um, it was all physical. But now we have these electronic devices, and it's like this entire... Uh, it's just it, existence has turned digital. So is that with the human condition becoming electrified? I don't think there's a problem with that. Digital is good. High levels of technology is great. You know, I'm not the Unabomber. I don't have an anti-technology manifesto or anything. But mm -hmm. I think we, the people, and that means everybody, we need to fight. I mean, bone coming out of finger, claws already scratched off to keep control of the internet we need to keep it to where you can do your show and i can publish mm -hmm. my shit and mm -hmm. compete with mainstream media we have to mm -hmm. keep that power they want to take it mm -hmm. we need to i think they had something called net neutrality oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah i didn't look into it much i didn't get involved i didn't feel like reading about it i just got to be honest i'm mm -hmm. glad it worked out in our favor but next mm -hmm. time i'll be aboard doing everything i can to make sure that uh it stays uh, in the hands of the people well, it, it goes into the socialist engineering agenda uh, uh, of saying we need to determine what's right and wrong for folks. And, and I see you touching uh, on that type of mind frame a lot in your videos, the socialist uh, you know, agenda. And is that something that y you see as being uh, a major concern and detrimental to our way of living? Well, I like to spur thought. I like to get people thinking about it. Uh, Obama is a great example uh, of the perfect patsy, if you, if you follow where I'm going. Mm -hmm. uh, we all mm -hmm. know the presidents don't run anything. Uh, mm -hmm. The only president, the only real president that we would ever have who would, would die in office because a real man would be ready to die for what he believes in and would not be um, swayed by any outside interest. Uh, now, as far Ron as, Paul. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so as far as socialism is concerned, I think that it would collapse in on itself because mm -hmm. if I'm taking from you to give to him, mm -hmm. at some point you're going to run out. 
I don't have any, and then he's left out. Mm-hmm. So, so, so you're you're depleted. I've kept my middleman fees, which keeps me in power, and the guy on the other end of the stick that I'm taking from you to give to, after you run out, he's done. Now, if you can pull me out of the equation, me being the socialist in this example, and I let you two come together, you may teach him to fish. He may decide to fish for you. He makes a living, and you being the employer, you're helping this man without having to pay someone else to help you help him. So if you pull government out of the way, I think that's a really good idea that deserves some thought. And uh, as far as socialism goes, I think that socialism would, would represent the man in the middle, the Robin Hood mentality. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that I think the idea of Robin Hood was very sweet and noble, but that's no way to run an economy. <laughs> well, there you go, this fact holding it down for the critical thinking of today, because. Uh, I been to tell you the truth. I'm really concerned with that being the most prominent uh, ideology today in running our economy, um, and they have it manipulated so well now, and it's engineered so well to where they have the Federal Reserve and the IRS bringing in your goods before you even get to see them, and uh, it, it, it's it's it shut off a lot of people to even I think understand that they're being robbed. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But not but it's still feeding into that imploding system of depletion. Uh, and and now man, we see the standardization of people is making people hella stupid and not even able nobody knows how to fish anymore is the problem so who do we look to to teach us how to fish people still know how to fish i think they do i Mm -hmm. I really think they do um it's just that they don't because they don't have to and and the reason why is because there's that socialist mechanism uh, that we just talked about right but you don't have to fish we'll give it to you right i think that some government assistance is okay um if you lose your job unemployment six weeks six months max because you may need a little time um to to get back on your feet you may need a little food but that cannot last forever it it has Mm -hmm. to come to an end a little help maybe Uh, i would not be opposed to no help at all i would not be opposed to conditions for help i mean i'm a weed smoker you know i I enjoy marijuana but if they said look you got to take a piss test before we give you this unemployment check Mm -hmm. i wouldn't like that shit but I understand it and I respect it and I wouldn't if I had to vote on it I would not vote against it because it's good there's nothing wrong with right. that the problem is they don't do that no they don't and uh, it's those kind of uh, situations to me are a little bit fuzzy anyways because a lot of people are paying into unemployment their whole life to get it so it doesn't really I don't see it as an entitlement. Same with Social Security. If people were paying into this their whole life, it's not that they're entitled to something. Well, you, should, that, you, you shouldn't pay into it, though. Why not save your own money? Right, I mean, right, if you right, save right. your own money, you earn interest on it. It boosts the value of the dollar so you don't have to consider buying gold. So that, that, that mechanism in itself creates perpetual slavery. Slavery being a mental condition. If you don't do this, you don't get this. Or I threaten you, and you do something because I threatened you, or you don't do something because I threaten you. That's a form of slavery. And to give you context, try that shit with a tree, a dog, or a cat. You tell the dog, hey, you go out here and you, you get my paper, damn it, or I'm going to kick your ass. Mm-hmm. That dog is going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Right. <laughs> so when you have a, a, a mechanism like um, Social Security in place, and you're paying into it, you're never going to get back what you paid into it in the first place. Yet you feel you're entitled. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? You have got to be kidding me. Right. No, no, your $18 or your $30 or $50 per pay period does not pay for a $1,000 or $2,000 a check per mm-hmm. month mm-hmm. in 50 years, especially when the government's sucking up the money 
you're not saving it, which puts pressure on a dollar. The government wasted, which puts pressure on it. It's all bullshit. No, mm -hmm. there should not be entitlements. There cool. should not be Social Security unless it was at the state level. That way, if the state screwed it up, it wouldn't affect the national currency. Yeah. <clears throat> the government is not acting in our best interest anyway. So why should I give you my money to save? And this is the question that many people in our country are asking themselves. I mean, Lord, no, Lord forbid me save money, I die and leave something to my family <laughs> that, 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 that doesn't get taxed. <laughs> Lord forbid that. So, yes, yeah, Social Security is BS. Yeah. It's socialism. And, and based on what we just talked about, the context that I laid it out, everyone should be against Social Security. If they get the concept, if their brain is capable of thinking about it in that way. It's about four or five layers that we discussed there. Right. And this is uh, why, you know, Ron Paul, to me, is a true leader in this field of the intellectual renaissance, man. It's, you know, because when you, he brings out these issues, he says, really, we can't talk about cutting anything until we're ready to ask the question of what our government should and shouldn't be doing. Let, let, let me let me get touch on Ron Paul because I have a few problems with Ron Paul and people please, like to please hear do. Me saying please do. This. you know I like to stay radical. Cool, cool. I like to watch Ron Paul interviews. I think he needs to practice his responses and probably take up some kind of an acting course or something or some kind of oratory course because sometimes when he has the spotlight, his messages come out garbled mm -hmm. and he hurts himself. I mean, there's a real chance this man won't even get elected. Mm -hmm. I mean, he needs to really work on his theatricals, mm -hmm. and and his messages need to be spot on. I mean, blast. Should he start smoking weed? Should he like smoke a blunt every now and then, just to loosen up? Uh, no, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I I wouldn't want the president smoking a joint unless it was with me. <laughs> discuss certain things, but but no, we. Okay, so I'll just fuck around. Um. I mean, I wouldn't be against him if he did, but yeah, he needs to work on that. Uh, okay. Uh, he needs to start taking all the interviews he can get. He needs to put his Google ads out. I don't see any Google ads for him, no ads anywhere. I want to see a Ron Paul commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see those people in the Ron Paul camp get fierce right. and start kicking some ass. Word. I mean, they they seem like weak pussies to a certain extent, and we expect this guy to win. Man, go after these bastards. Yeah. Get radical. For sure, I mean, man. You're 70 something years old. You're three and four in the polls. Start kicking some ass. Go after Rick Perry. Yeah. Talk about Gardasil. Go yeah. after Mitt Romney and Obama care. Stop pussifying. Uh, if you up. saw the, uh, let, let me stop getting into a rant. Like that guy no, saw no, the Republican cool. debates and they asked him, uh, the Republican debates, I, I think his name was Palenti. Uh, the moderator asked him if he referred to uh, Obamacare as Obamacare. The dude's penis just shrunk to levels un before believed to be acceptable for a man. And <laughs> you have to go after these bastards. I mean, who gives a damn? Mm -hmm. Attack! Did, did you see the Ron Paul video uh, came out like yesterday where he was calling uh, Rick Perry a male cheerleader? I did. I did, saw it. I did see that. But do it more. It yeah. wasn't good enough. And have some bass <laughs> in your voice. Eat some right, hot right. chips before you talk, Ron Paul. <laughs> Kick some ass. But yeah, I'm up for Ron Paul. I, I one thing I did, I will give him this though. I I have noticed him being a little bit more aggressive. But go yeah. for the jugular. Yeah, for sure. Call man. Obama a socialist traitor. Call him that. I mean, get some attention, man. Mm -hmm. Let's be radical. Take mm -hmm. that hundred, that hundred, uh, that hundred mile bike ride here in Houston. And uh, by let's yourself, see if we get news cut. Thank you. Let's see yeah. if we get the news coverage. Oh man, that's a damn good idea, man. I'm writing them tonight, Ron. Do it by yourself. They won't take you up on it. Do it by yourself, man. Get some kids they, to do it with you. They call them weak on every television interview you can <laughs> just because they refuse to come ride with you. Oh man, well, you know, Ron Paul campaign, if you're listening and you need some strategical advice, you need to get at vizfag.com. And, and, and you know the Republicans aren't going to nominate him. Why doesn't they, – they ought to be behind the scenes making sure that he can get on the ballots under a libertarian or independent ticket and get that strategy rolling right now. I understand why he wants to get the Republican nomination. The yeah. problem with Republicans is they're Democrats. Right. So they're not going to roll with this cat. Mm -hmm. They and want that, war. They're not going to do it. I mean, it might happen, but 
they're on Rick Perry's dick so hard that the man's probably about to have an orgasm in his mm-hmm. in his political van yeah, or no bus doubt. or whatever. You know, so I see that it, shit then though. I see his shit. I mean, he didn't even show up yesterday, South Carolina. It, you know, I I feel like it's because these issues of the Gardasil. You know, he's out here promoting experimental uh, pharmacological agents that are hurting people. His uh, you, you know, being involved with the NASA superhighway, trying to use eminent domain to take people's farms, man. It's crazy that this is a brand of conservatism that they try to use against the conservatism of, of Ron Paul, man. Like, it's a, it's a joke, but it's obviously a joke that not everybody's in on because he's the governor of Texas. I'm tripping on that. I wouldn't. I mean, I hate that that I have to be against Rick Perry. I mean, I really would like to bring out my pom poms and be a cheerleader, mm-hmm. but the dude's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. I mean, under the um, not not only not based on the idea of him being uh, Al Gore's bitch back in the '80s, right. but just based on the, the simple idea that he really does seem like a Democrat to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything he does is New World Order ish. Well, the, the the controversial things that he did was New World Order ish brings to mind a few insane YouTube videos that are starting to become fact. And um, it's a shame that you can't get behind front runners nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think Alex Jones was touched. Alex Jones was touching on this. Everyone wants to be a winner. Um, but in the real world, Rick Perry may mess around and end up president. I mean, just being realistic. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> at the same time, it is not beyond the realm of thinking that Ron Paul could be president. It's very, very possible that he could be president. We have seen things in uh, in our short lifetimes that should let us know that anything is possible. Yeah, no, it is. You know, just Ron Paul and Rick Perry have never even kicked it, man. I just saw this the other day. I couldn't believe that, dude. I mean, why should they? And who cares? Texas is a big place. I'm in Houston. Houston is a, there are parts of Houston I haven't even been to. Right. I well, have relatives I, that I have never kicked it with. <laughs> so for that to be a huge issue is just is just ridiculous. I'm just surprised me, man. I thought these I thought all these politicians were going to Denny's and getting coffee and stuff, man. I mean it's like so now now it's supposed to be some kind of problem that Ron Paul didn't hang out with Rick Perry as if he's some kind of lesser uh un uh law, disloyal Texan because he never hung out with Rick Perry. Well that just goes to show that Ron Paul is not establishment. Yeah. He should not be hanging out with Ron, Rick Paul, Rick, whatever, D- Slick Dick Perry. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, the way that he put it was that, you know, and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a proper, is that he said, I never got an invitation to the governor's mansion. So I, I would uh, think that th- it just goes to show that there's a, a huge divide e- even in, in between people of the same really close demographics, which is, uh, not a bad thing, and we need to embrace that. I, I mean, I'm all, I'm all about having uh, individual opinions and, and sticking to those guns. Well, 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 I heard you say Alex Jones, man. I heard, I one thing I caught on uh, one of your blogs, man, was that you described him as a countermeasure to George Bush in Texas. Yeah, you read that. Awesome. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man, VizFact.com is what's cracking. Those guys coming at you, so everybody check that out. But the countermeasure to George Bush, and that was artistic to me, man. Well, and, thanks. And for real, man, because I was, it, it's these, it's metaphys, it's this metaphysical aspect of, of life, man, that really needs to get appreciated, man. And when you see these dueling, uh, you know, characters, even if they're not like themselves fighting it out with each other it's like what they embody is going against each other man and uh i i you see do you see that happening on any other you know type of level in the world well uh the case in point is uh that that quote you pulled from that uh post i wrote it, it was related to uh the idea of texan fatigue it doesn't matter what what state you're from. You're an American. You, you should be able to run for president. And the idea that um, there was this notion of Texan fatigue, uh, well, there's a guy named Alex Jones that um, is, is a very radical Texan, and that's good because you know Texas is a radical place. 
and uh, as far as the duality you were you were concerned with, that was the exact idea I was embodying in the statement that Alex Jones is a perfect countermeasure to George Bush. It does enforce and make the when I when I write these things, I wanna I wanna spur thought. I don't wanna give you my opinion. That's one thing I, I don't like to do because I want to spur thought rather than form your opinion. I want you to think about it, and I want to give you a way of thinking about it and let you form your own opinion, and that in itself is a form of duality versus me shaping your opinion, yet you reading my uh, hints as to what my opinion is, and it spurs you to think. So that, yeah, I do believe uh, that that kind of correlates uh, to the spirit of of what you were looking for as an answer from me, from what I from what you just asked. That's what's up, man. And, and so, right now, I'm talking to Vizfac, Mr. Vizfac. He's got his YouTube thing popping off. I just again, man, I really appreciate you coming on here, man, and uh, spending some time to let us know where you're coming from and to bring us into your world, man. Is there uh, anything that any projects that you're working on that you want to uh, plug and get any way people can support you? Well, um, vizfact.com. Um, subscribe to me at YouTube and uh, leave comments. Uh, click the Facebook like button because uh, it helps me to get the word out. And um, be uh, think critically and stand up for what you believe in and never settle for less. Yeah. And you, that that's all like I guess that's what I got. Ron Paul twenty twelve. Yeah. Hello? Cool, yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Oh, uh, and most importantly, don't be afraid to die. There you go, man. Because that's guarantee. gonna hold you back, man. That's gonna hold you back. Show, man. And that's V I Z F A C T. Well And that's V is a victory. There you go, man. A little visictory. Uh, what? Well, well, I saw this bookstore thing on your on your page, man. You got like a, a link to Amazon. People can go check out what you're reading and stuff. Is that what that was? Uh, right. Uh, it's a few books that I think are pretty. These are all books that I've read or either uh, plan to read. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a link to the Holy Bible. I think that's a great book to have. Cool. And uh, I read this book called Hong Kong, which is about. Uh, uh, a takeover or a throw uh, over the overthrowing the communists where, where the people got together and they overthrew uh the communists the chinese it was a very interesting book they had the backing of a billionaire and they had things wired to where they could shut down the electricity and a few military peeps helped out it was and it was really a revolution by the people uh but they just had a little bit of help uh, the guy, uh, the revolutionary leader, he was he didn't have a huge role in the book. Uh, it was really great. I don't want to over get into it too go, much. Go. It's called it's on the page. It's called Hong Kong. Um, there's also the Art of War. That's a really great book for understanding how to deal with challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, don't attack or engage unless you can escape. <laughs> so I, go, man. I, I, that's good. So like, uh, don't get into something you can't get out of. Is mm -hmm. the message you're supposed to get into that? In order to get those messages, you have to have uh, the ability to form your ability, uh, opinion and critically think about uh, the little passages in the book and how they will relate to your life. And the, my favorite book of all time uh, is Invitation to the Game by Monica Hughes. I read it when I was a kid. I'm just so glad I could find the link to it. That book is awesome. It's about a few teenagers that are... Uh, it seems like a socialist world. It's like uh, America has become China in this book. And these kids are, all the people that are not in the in crowd are forced to wear raggedy, light-colored clothes so they could be e easily identified. And and, and uh, it kind of relates to how the mutants are treated in X-Men. Um, as a black man, you can kind of relate to that. I've never been a victim of racism that I know of. Uh, but the, the general idea of racism and being singled out, class warfare, I think the new form of racism is money. So, uh, <laughs> but not in the context to where that, that would need to be class warfare. I think that you're not treated right unless you are worth a certain amount. And I think that sucks and it shouldn't be that way, but that's, you know, a product of television. So I think Invitation to the Game is a very good look at the, the, the very, the, the worst part of that. 
Cool, man. We definitely got to be, you know, taking a look at that. Those things, some, some of these ideas are unfortunately right on the horizon unless we get to work, man, do some serious changing things. Well, cool, Visfac. Uh, really glad that you came on the hand blogger, man. And uh, we're going to keep on getting at you, see what you're up to. And uh, make sure that you, you know, drop us a line and uh, stay in touch to us so that we can uh, just stay in tune with what you're doing, man. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Cool, and, man. I'll uh, check really, you out. Hey, uh, and please uh, check out vizfact.com. I'm trying to get 25 likes on Facebook so I can set up a username. Help me out. <laughs> okay. That's V I Z F A C T. Uh, yep, that's V as in victory, I Z as in zebra, F as in Frank. You know, Joe Friday, just the facts. There you go, com. man. There you go. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I'll get at you. Stay up. All right. Peace.